the CNET UK podcast live, sort of, from Barcelona. We're here at Mobile World Congress 2014, bringing you the coolest phones, tablets, smartwatches, wearable technology, all manner of great stuff. Uh, so yeah, we've been here for about a week now. We're all gone slightly, slightly stir crazy, but uh, there you go. So we're going to talk about the things that we've seen that we really liked, the things we really hated, the things you should buy, the things you definitely shouldn't buy, and uh, and and much, much more, I guess. Much, so yeah, much, much, much more. Much more. So, um, so yeah, so we're going to kick off with looking at the, uh, the best things that we saw this week. Me, I don't know. I'm here with this guy and this guy, right? Hey, Luke Westaway. Hello. You didn't need to give me a full introduction. And seen as Andy Hoyle. Hey, I'm here too. Anyway, yeah, let's talk about the best things we saw. So, seen as Luke Westaway. What did you see that you really liked this week? Uh, I'll tell you what I liked a lot more than I thought yeah. I would was Nokia's long rumoured Android phone, Nokia, Nokia X. The Nokia X. Yeah. Also, the Nokia it's got the X Factor. It does have the X Factor. I wish I'd thought of that when I had to do about <laughs> 20 minutes of video on it. <laughs> but I've got the chance now. Well, this look, look for that video online This now. phone's got the X Factor, and um, it's also got the X Plus, X Plus Factor and the XL Factor, because surprisingly, yeah. there are three versions of this phone. Okay. Um, the X Plus uh, is the same, it has a bit more RAM, and it comes with a four gigabyte SD card in the box. Yep. That is the, that is the end of the differences. And the XL is just a, a bigger a bigger version. So uh, I, what I liked about them was I wasn't expecting much from Nokia's take on Android sure. because um, before MWC we got leaks that suggested, uh, uh, oh, you know, it's, it's basically just going to look like Windows Phone and it's not going to have access to Google Play. And all of that turned out to be true. And yet, <laughs> for some reason, it when... Worked. Yeah, when I was using it, I I didn't hate it. I mean, it's not it's not amazing. Um, so it doesn't look like Android because it's a, it's Android at its core. Yeah, it's isn't... Android at its core, but you would never know it. It looks uh, like a kind of slightly broken Windows phone. The interface is quite interesting actually because it's a lot simpler. You're not selling it to me. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a lot simpler than Android is. So you get okay. you, you have one home screen which has all your apps on it. There's sure. no app tray like you get in Android. Yeah. And if you swipe to the right, you get Nokia's Fast Lane. Uh, and what that is, yeah. is a screen that basically shows you all of your recently used apps and notifications sort of in chronological order. Right. So it's a, it's a quick way of like, hopping back and forth. So that's kind of, because they've pulled that straight from it's their Asher phone. So yeah, it's kind so of like a mashup the of Asher yeah. and an Windows Asher mashup. A mashup. An Asher, 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 and mashup. <laughs> yeah, and we'll I'm, work on that. I don't really, yeah, I don't really work. work on that and we'll get back to you. <laughs> but yeah, using it, it's... Uh, it, it, I'll tell you what really sold it to me was yeah. that I didn't expect the phones to be so cheap. The Nokia X is going to cost 89 euros, and it looks just like a Lumia phone. Yeah. Um, very it's, colourful. It's, yeah. Yeah. It's very. They're very colourful. They got come in a bunch of different colours. They were quite nice. Uh, quite a nice display. Uh, you know, an all right camera and the software. Like you can't download any old Google thing. If you're really ambitious. Nokia says you can sideload apps, okay. um, which I think is a bit more technical than most people will want to bother with. Sure. But if you want to, it's that option. It, it's there. not really a phone to, for, for, uh, for people who are going to be thinking about sideloading apps, really, is it? I mean, not it's, really. it's, it's a sort of cheap phone, it works, yeah, yeah, it looks yeah. good. And we, yeah. were, we were so uh, kind of enthralled with the really cheap Windows phones when they started to emerge. And this is like that, but to a crazy degree like the, the 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 windows phones that we were so excited about were like 150 200 pounds or something yeah, we were like oh yeah. you can get a smartphone for this much money and this is 80 89 euros yeah so you know i was pleasantly surprised so can you can it's, you it's get not the great, essential apps like twitter and facebook on it it's got uh, yeah it's got twitter and facebook and WhatsApp, whatsapp and bbm uh, okay. spotify oh, i can't remember if it's got spotify um, but but this is the thing it's like it it will it will have like major apps that you want to use, sure. but it's more about there's no way it's going to be getting new apps first, yeah. Yeah. because um, Android developers once they develop an app, they then have to like specially port, port it, it over. over yeah. They can't just import it into Nokia's app store. They have to tweak the code a bit because of the way Nokia handles its billing, and it generally means that they have to fiddle about a bit. On paper, this sounds appalling. It's like an Android phone that has none of the the things that are good about Android. I know, but I, like, are we slightly? But it works. Maybe we're slightly wrong when we say that the best thing about Android is like it's customization and yeah. flexibility and access to the app store and maybe all that people want actually is just like a cheap smartphone that works okay yeah or maybe i've just been at this show for way too long and i can't remember what i think you've got or how i feel or your own name 
that's what's happened. Well, a cheap phone that works okay. I think that's that's a pretty noble, noble goal. What about you, Andy? What have you seen that you're excited so, about? So I haven't been looking at anything cheap at all. I've been looking at the Sony <laughs> premium, <laughs> top shelf premium, all the way for Andy Hoyle. I've gone right to the top. <laughs> the, uh, the Sony Xperia Z2. It's it's Sony's latest, um, their flagship phone. Uh -huh. It's um, it's quite similar to the Z1. It has the, the same like um, sort of metal. Uh, alum one piece aluminium band around sure. the edge, glass front and back, so it looks gorgeous. It's completely waterproof still. Yes. The, uh, the screen's a bit bigger, it's 5.1 inches, but it's got really slim bezels on this one, so it hasn't had to, the bulk of the body hasn't had to stretch out too much. Uh, on the previous Z1, um, the bezels were really chunky, so it made it look a little bit, a little bit clunky. More like looking at an antique painting with a giant ornate wooden frame. I wouldn't mind that as much actually <laughs> okay. but uh, this phone's great and, it, and it's um, the screen looks good it's got a, it's got the 20.7 megapixel camera but it can shoot video in 4k which although you can't play it back on the screen because it's only full hd you can like digitally zoom into your into your videos um, without losing quality which is really really handy and as sony rightly points out it's just great for future proofing for when people do start buying more 4K TVs. Sure. Right now, they are thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds, mm. but they are gradually becoming cheaper, and in a few years' time, they will be much more yeah. affordable. Right. Well, I don't know. I mean, I never watch videos that I've shot on my phone, on my TV, even though I can currently yeah. watch them at the uh, resolution that they're being shot at. Yeah. Right. So I'm not sure that the introduction, of, will the introduction of 4K, will that make that more of a thing? Do people watch home movies? Maybe if people have the people like, do that. Maybe people with children and happier lives. Than <laughs> well, Sony's really pushing. <laughs> I just want to. People who don't have an empty shell of a life. <laughs> yeah. Sony's really pushing the the Z2 as kind of like the camcorder. They've 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 done so many so many camera tricks before, but this one's all about the video yeah. side. And okay. so it's got like optical image stabilization in there as well for video. And it's got it, it, they've got various software tweaks to try and help the the audio stand a bit better. So it's really designed to give you like well, so they say, as good video quality as possible. So maybe you actually will want to watch this stuff back because maybe it's going to start looking a lot better okay. when shot from your phone as opposed yeah. to a proper a proper camcorder. Okay, fair enough. All right, and uh, but there's, I mean, that's sort of the things that have really impressed us. There's been some stuff as well that we What's just looked at and you, just thought. Rich? Yeah, what you, you like? Told well, us. that's the thing. I couldn't really pick one thing particularly. I mean, apart from you guys, obviously. Thanks. I was going to say Firefox phone actually because there's, I mean, there's quite a few of them. They've been made by Alcatel, people like that. Um, I don't know if I could pick one out necessarily, but I think it's pretty cool that this this time last year, Firefox OS was a thing that was just starting out, and we weren't sure if it was going to become a thing or if it's going to happen. And um, there's been a bunch of phones that are made using that software. Yeah. So that's kind of a, a sort of a, a potential rival to Android. There's loads and loads to choose from, and uh, it, we could see kind of manufacturers and networks uh, using Firefox OS to maybe move away from Android a little bit, give people a little bit more choice, and come up with uh, cheap phones. Yeah. So it's good, cheap phones that work well. So, so cheap phones. one of the one of the Firefox phones was going to be only twenty five dollars. Yeah, I, I believe. So it's, which is nuts. Which is which has kind of really been the the big story of the show is sort of much more affordable things, sure. and a lot of the companies are talking about. They're bringing the next billion online and uh, in like these emerging markets, and right. that's all about having cheap tech. So we've got that, like you were saying, Luke, with Nokia's phone, it's super cheap, and then super cheap Firefox phones. Mm. And these are all for areas that are sort of emerging, and exactly. people are wanting to move into smartphones yeah. and start to use 2G and 3G networks. It seems like that's where the money is. Well, that's it. I mean, manufacturers have reached the point where in the Western world, everybody's got a smartphone, right? Yeah. Yeah. It worked. Some people have too. We sold them all the smartphones. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, quick. now what do we do? Yeah. yeah. So exactly. So yeah, yeah China, uh, areas like that. Yeah. So yeah. cool. Okay. And uh, what about things that you've seen that just made you think, what the hell is that? Well, Any, anything really, really awful. So I was over at uh, Fujitsu stand actually yeah. with you, Rich. You That's were right. There. I was there. I was taking photos of your well. face. Your delightful face. It was face, a happier time. You, you look particularly spiffing. <laughs> well, if I may I, use a word that's oh, ridiculous. Yeah, I just threw that on. Yeah. Um, so they've got, um, it's a prototype, and it's basically yeah. it's a tablet that has um, like an advanced haptic feedback. That's like the vibration that right. you get when you touch the screen. Yeah. And the idea is that it can localize this, this haptic feedback, this vibration, in certain parts of the screen in order to um, try and give the impression of texture when you're running your finger. So the way, the way they're selling this, right, is that um, that you can look at, so you can have a picture on the screen and you can touch it and feel it, and it feels like when you're just touching a, a tablet screen, yeah. it feels so like you're actually you touching that thing. You can look at a picture of a flower 
and you can touch it like this and it'll be like, yes, mm. trace it's actually in the pollen. So trace it's, it's delicate filigrees. Yeah, yeah the thing. example yeah. that Fujitsu so had was, um, it, was a, it was a delicate. crocodile. Yeah. And a crocodile with all these, we've got obviously all these scales and stuff. And as you run your finger, finger. Well, exactly. they ask Well, now to. you can. Yeah. Without Finally. it biting your hand off. My World Congress presents a safe way to touch a crocodile. Yeah. And so Except, as, you, as you run except. your finger along it, yeah. it um, and when you get just like the, the more jagged ridges, it yeah. vibrated harder because that would be a more yeah. thing. Except it just doesn't work. Yeah. It, it just felt it like, doesn't feel it like, felt like, it like the vibration chip Well, no, have going... you ever felt a crocodile? Maybe crocodiles just feel like a weird tablet. Yeah. You don't if know. If crocodiles just vibrate all day, they'll <laughs> feel like that. Every, <laughs> every scale. <laughs> Every scale of a crocodile, they're vibrating with hunger and rage. <laughs> they just sat there thinking, like, oh, wish a human would chance upon me. So where this kind of works is it works in some kind of texture. So for example, one of the demos they had was like a safe uh, lock. Right. And it's got this, it, it, it's a weird feeling. Like, it's really hard to describe. It does feel like there's actual drag. So it does feel like it's slightly rougher because it okay. does feel like you can't drag this your This sounds your like the so. feeling of when you run your finger along the edge of a balloon. <laughs> it, it is very similar. It's like, kind of like rubbery, yeah. like... Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah, is how I like to start my day. <laughs> kind of feeling. Yeah. All right. Good. That is, that is, that is, it's, it's kind of weird, yeah. It's only a prototype, but uh, yeah, it's kind of weird. But, yeah. So what about you, Luke? Do you see anything cool? Uh, and weird and quirky? And, uh, should yes. I come back to you? We're doing a podcast right now. Oh, okay. okay. Right, we are. <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Shouldn't have said any of that. Okay, yes. I saw something. We have started. I didn't hate this. I liked <laughs> okay. it. But I've been very lucky this show in that I didn't actually see anything that I didn't like. Right, okay. Um, so, actually, can I talk about two things? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. I can. Why, yeah, not? why not? Do whatever I like. Can't stop me. <laughs> okay. Um, one was the uh, Panasonic Tough Pad. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So the name is not obviously very exciting. You're like, this is just a rugged tablet. But it's far, It's like a. Not it's another got a, one. I know, but it's got like a five-inch screen, so it, it is basically a phone. And honestly, it is. Wait. What? It's it's a it's a tablet with a it's a five-inch tablet. It's That's a five, not a thing. It's a five inch. That's a phone. Well, this is the thing. I was like, are you sure it's not a phone? And they were like, we don't really want to call it a tablet or a phone. <laughs> we don't want to put labels but on no, this. No, seriously, stuff. seriously, it has more in common with a tank than either either of those things. Because I'd seen some pictures of this before yeah. I got my hands on it. And I was like, okay, yeah, it's got like rubbery bits around the edges. And yeah. then I flipped it on its side. And it's honestly, um, it's, it's about like an, in, an inch and a half thick, wow. I think. It's kind of like, like a club sandwich <laughs> made of rugged foam. Right. And, it, and it was just, just holding it. Oh, you know what they reminded me of? Do you know those black bricks that you have in swimming pools? That you yes. drop to the bottom and you have to swim now and pick them yeah. up. In your pajamas. Yeah, it's, imagine that, but with a five inch screen in, in the middle. And they're, they're waterproof, they're dustproof. We dropped them. If you uh, check out the video, if you search for uh, the Panasonic Tough Pad CNET yeah. video or something like that, you'll find it. We're throwing them around and dropping them. And, and uh, you know, they, I just thought, you know what? This is peace of mind. <laughs> this is peace of mind because you could not, I mean, I couldn't get it into my pocket. Uh, I mean, so I couldn't actually Which carry it. Which is what I look for in a phone, personally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, not, it's not portable, it's not really practical, but there would you it, go. Would it stop anyone from stealing the phone? Yes, because you could hit them with it. See. Yeah, yeah. Well, no one would want to steal the phone because it's a bit rubbish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, but, but you know, like, it's cool. It, it just looked cool. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's a nice break from, like, slim, ergonomic, Fluff. It's, you know, like it's back to basics. Yeah. It's industrial. It's the it's the phone that John Connor would use when he mashes the the T eight hundreds. Although it's not obviously made of like anything that could destroy a Terminator. That's not good. I don't know. Have you ever hit a Terminator? T eight hundred or T one hundred? T one thousand. The T one thousand is the second one in the second film. Yeah. Right we should, in, we should probably get to the bottom of this before us, we continue. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, the other thing I wanted to talk yeah. about was um, this really, really interesting uh, bit of tech. It's not a phone or tablet, which okay. is interesting. Right. And um, the technology is not especially new, but I think this is the first time, it was the first time I've ever seen it. It's yeah. the first time it's kind of been in a showable state, I think. It's called Pure Li-Fi. Okay. And it is a system for transferring data that uses light rather than radio waves. Okay. Or traditional radio waves. Yeah. There's some debate in the comments of this story as to what light waves technically count as, whether they are still radio waves or something. Nerds. So, so we're going to leave that aside for a minute. Yeah. And so what the demons, what they have kind of running on their stand is they've yeah. got basically a light in a ceiling. It looks like an ordinary light, but it's actually an LED bulb. Um, just, just like any other. Just like any other. And it just looks like it's on, but yeah. in fact it is flickering uh, millions of times per second. And the, the, those flickers being picked up by this sensor that's just on the floor under the light, right. and it is streaming um, TV. It's, it's streaming video to a television. And if you put your hand 
in the middle, yeah. it stops the stream and then you move it away and you're like, hang on, but it's just a lamp. It's just a lamp, this doesn't make sense. Right. Where is the data in the lamp? How does the lamp data make it to the television data? <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. And it's, it's pretty I thought you were going to say you put your hand in it and like the skin melts off your bones. Yeah, yeah I put my hand in it and I burst into flames. <laughs> um, yeah. You're Disaster. looking good now though. Like, well, it's good. Yeah. Well, this is a, I'm wearing a lot of makeup. Yeah. I'm all of my, my yeah. you're anyway. basically just held together by makeup. Yeah, now. I'm, I'm more makeup than man now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, but it's kind of cool. They've got high, like really big ambitions for it. They want it to replace radio spectrum eventually. I'm, sure. not, sure, I'm not sure it's going to do that, but it's cool. Well, the whole Light point stator. of radio is that it doesn't have to be line of sight, right? Yes. So, so you can have things like you know walls and houses and things, places to live. Well, they're convinced that this doesn't have to be line of sight, or, or we yeah. will eventually get to the point where it doesn't they've got they've got like a defining principle of light Uh, i mean i'm no expert i just play one on tv yeah well they've got they've got a new um kind of one of these receiver box thingies that they're working on for this year that knows which light source it should be looking for it's basically got like protocols to make sure that it doesn't get confused because obviously there's light everywhere yeah if you know if my computer was trying to read lights from everything it would be like and then it would die. Right. Um, but do you get a better maybe. signal if it's in a pitch dark room? Do you know? I think I, I've got a feeling you might. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or if the light was bright, but I don't. I don't really know. But so, you know, so what cool, we're saying cool is, is, is you love lamp, is what you're saying. I love lamp. Good. Good. I'm saying. glad to hear that. So there okay. you go. Uh, pure yeah. Wi-Fi. So one of the things that I saw, is, is, are you done? Yep. Yeah, okay. Good. Right. So one of the things that I saw that I thought was pretty cool. Sorry. Was, uh, Check out the video, pure Wi-Fi. <laughs> On CNET.com. Actually, and yeah. now over to you, Rich. YouTube.com slash CNET for all the videos of all the cool stuff we've been covering uh, from my World Congress. There's loads and loads and loads of it, so if you're not doing anything else, then uh, that's a good way of wasting um, your life, I guess. Anyway, so I saw this thing called. <laughs> there's, a, there's a chance you're wasting your life anyway. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're watching this right now. I guess if you're watching this, it's far <laughs> yeah. too late for you. It could be worse. You could be in this podcast. Uh, so, yeah, I saw this <laughs> thing that was, um, oh it was called the, the Fujitsu Glove, right? And it's, uh, it's a piece of wearable technology which has yeah. NFC and stuff in it. Does it cure existential doubt? <laughs> it's, yeah. If only it did. If only it did. If only yeah. any gadget could, could fill that aching yeah. void in yeah. it. The heart of our souls. Anyway, so what does um, this glove do? So what it does is it's um, it's designed for work, right? It's kind of it's supposed to be like a hands-free way of interacting mm. with machinery and technology. So you kind of you walk around with this glove on it, and you can point at machines, and it talks to a pair of <laughs> do, you know, do like, your job <laughs> machines. Yeah, exactly. I can point at machines without a glove. <laughs> T- so, like TV. Work harder. <laughs> so the crucial part, which I may not mention, <laughs> yeah. is that there are like there's NFC tags on the, uh, on the on the bits of machinery, and then they talk to uh, an AR, gla- uh, AR pair of augmented reality glasses that you're wearing. So you point at a machine, and then in your glasses you see um, the status of that piece of machinery, what it's doing, if anything's wrong, and if something is wrong, how you fix it. And it's even what if it's like my NFC tags broken? <laughs> <laughs> well, then that's it. That's just that's shut it down. That's I've the just had my hand cut off in a machine. <laughs> <laughs> the, glove, the gloves in it. You point at it, it's like, do not point yeah. at this thing. I've become sentient and will overthrow my human pointers. Exactly. So, so um, one of the one of the kind of things about it is things like um, if you like, grab a cable that's been unplugged, then it will like show you which socket you need to plug it back into. Oh, yeah. that is useful. It might even solve the question of plugging in a USB thing the right the right way around the first the first time. Which so no if one you, of these you've got exactly. the USB yeah. thing, and, and if you're about to plug it in the wrong way, it delivers a massive electric shock through the glove. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of cool, it's kind of fun. And in the video, I got to wear a high visibility, a high visibility vest. So and you that's always exciting. Yeah, Thanks. As well. You yeah. looked good. He yeah. was a man at work. <laughs> in so, many, uh, many ways, yeah. I also went and uh, I drove a Tesla around Barcelona. Oh, that's cool. You, you might was- say you're a Tesla Hoyle. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Thanks. I'm, I'm proud of you for that one. That's very good. Proud yeah. of yourself. Um, that was, uh, Can we edit that, that out? <laughs> no. Um, edit everything else out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just repeat that for half an hour. <laughs> yeah. um, so how was it? How was the so test yeah, it was good fun because it's good to drive. Good, it's good to drive that car. Yeah. Um, it, I think it was it was terrifying for the other guy who was with me because <laughs> uh, it was only once we'd driven out onto the public roads that I said, "Well, so I've never driven. No, I can't a le- drive. I've never yeah. driven a left-hand drive car. I'm I've blind. never driven on the right-hand side of the road in Europe. And um, yeah. uh, what else have I never done? Um, I, I don't really drive around cities because I learned to drive in Buxton, in Derbyshire, in the countryside, yeah. right. not in cities. Yeah. And so I don't know but how to use... By this point, use... he'd already climbed out of the tree that the car was in. <laughs> well, by this point, he shouted at me once because I nearly crashed it into cars because the part on the right because I didn't realise how much extra spaces there is to the right of me because 
I'm used to sitting on the right. Okay. <laughs> and so he was like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. So, so what was actually like the uh, the car then? The car was good. The car was really nice, and it's fully electric. It's not it's not a new one, but it's got loads of cool like the stuff called Telefonica mm. is powering all of that 3G connectivity inside, and so sort of the center console is this enormous touchscreen. I think it's about 13 inches. Right. And so it shows all your maps. Wait, what? That's like of, a television. It is. It's in huge. a car. It's, it's enormous. It's this huge, uh, huge thing. Right. Um, and um, yeah, it's got all all. All like the mapping stuff. It's all voice controlled. The car itself is electric, and yep. I think it's got like a range of like 250 miles from a charge, okay. and you can charge it to 80% in 25 minutes. Something wow. like ludicrous like that. Yeah. So I think it's really cool. I mean, it's not cheap. It's about I think up to about 80 grand. Right. Um, but you know. So that's pretty cool. Well, there it's, were rumours, weren't there, that Apple might be was was trying to buy Tesla. They did talk to Tesla actually. Yeah, yeah. They, right. they wouldn't confirm whether it was about uh, buying them. They, they have been in talks oh, with them. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure if that's a thing anymore. No. A real thing. No, fair enough. Well, it's, it's kind of interesting that um, that you come to Mobile World Congress and in the last few. I mean, even sort of you know four or five years ago, first time I came here, it was all about phones. That was it. It was just phones all yeah. the way. But now we're here and we're seeing we're seeing cars, we're seeing uh, tablets, we're seeing smartwatches, wearable technology. Uh, you know, there's there's just everything is mobile nowadays. Yeah. I guess. What a time to Absolutely. be because everything everything exactly. connects what an age to your mobile. Your mobile yeah. is basically like the hub for all exactly. these things. It's the hub for your for your watch, and it connects to your car, and it connects to your tablet and everything else. And, and your glove. And your glove. And, and your no glove, glove yeah. no love, Luke. So we, I didn't say that earlier. But I'm glad I did now. Yeah, I feel yeah. better. I feel good inside. I think we all do. I um, glove lamp. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, so I mean, one sure. of the things we saw as well a lot of was uh, everybody has uh, something called something band. There's, oh, yeah. uh, there's the Sony Smart Band. There's the uh, there's the Life Band, the Talk Band, the uh, the Fit Band, the Band Band, the One Man yeah. Band, the Bonzo Dog Doodah Band. <laughs> it's like bangles. Everything's bangles. <laughs> bangles, yeah, yeah, actually. But why haven't they adopted that as a, as a kind of uh, smart bangle. product sector? Smart, smart bangle. bangle. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Talk like an Egyptian. I'd have. Oh. That's a very good. You are this is why we pay the big money. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, have you, are there any that stood out for you? Any of these? Uh, cool? Yeah, I really actually like uh, Samsung's Gear Fit. Okay, uh, yep. this is kind of like the smaller, um, the smaller version of its of its watches. Uh, yep. So it's got a, it's got an elongated screen, and it's really focused on just um, like the exercise. Um, Thing. So it's got it's got underneath it. It's got yeah. this heart rate sensor, and the apps on it are all about the pedometers and, and tracking. So less so about the calls and stuff. Although yeah. it can take your notifications, and it does also have storage on board, so you can play music without your phone. Sure. Uh, but it's just it just looks cool. It's small, and it, it and the screen on it is this curved OLED display, so it looks really really nice. And you can actually take out the the actual units and change the strap, so it. You can have all the different designs, different colours, and right. some like um, ones from like fashion houses that are coming. And they, so actually, it's got this fashion focus. So you don't look like a bit of a douche in wearing it, right? Which is kind of critical. Are for you all, sure? All these things. Well, there's they, a. Oh, sorry, go on. Sorry, go on. That's kind of it. Yeah. They they call it the Gear Fit, which is just a bit weird. I'd, I'd like them to call it like the Samsung Ristama jig. Uh, <laughs> nice. But which would, which would be cool. Why, why, why don't we work for Samsung? They're, they're, I mean, they're coming up with really. great names left, right, and centre. Samsung, call us. Yeah. Yeah, we should. <laughs> so yeah, I think that was. I think that's. I think that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Sony right. does a similar thing actually with their their smart band. Uh, they have a thing called the core where you take out the thing and you put it into different devices. Yeah. So you can put it in like a camera and stuff as well. I'll tell you something else that's good about Sony's one yep. is its app, because lots of these things have apps, but they're usually not very good. Yep. Sony's one is nice because it lets you track back through this animated timeline, so you can see when you're asleep, and it also remembers what apps you were using when, yep. so you can see how much time you spend on Twitter and stuff. That's pretty cool. We should probably talk as well a little bit about the Samsung Galaxy S5. It was supposed to be the big story of the show. Oh, what do you think? Thumbs up, thumbs down, underwhelmed, overwhelmed? It's a bit of an evolution, but it, not that yeah, exciting. Fine. It, it, I don't particularly like the design. Um, you don't got sound this, impressed. You sound underwhelmed. I'm a yeah. little underwhelmed, yeah. But it's got a, the camera looks good. It's completely waterproof, and I like that about Sony's phones. I think Sony might have a bit of a struggle on its hands, but it's kind of lost its one marketing thing sure. over Samsung now. So yeah, um, it is good that it's yeah, and it also I like the fact it's got a heart rate monitor, and that's that's, that's kind of cool. It has one one feature that is absolutely amazing, which yeah. is called Ultra Power Saver Battery Mode or something like that. Put right. an S in there somewhere probably. <laughs> right. uh, but what that does is is it's when like seriously guys, there's no more battery, yeah. and it turns the screen um, monochrome, dims it to maximum, and replaces the interface completely with just about four buttons. Right. So you can call text, and that's about it. 
That's and so, it, so yeah. it's like really like yeah. absolutely emergency. Cuts out all 4G connectivity cut, 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 so, so, so what you're saying is the best feature of the most advanced smartphone in the world is that it turns off being the most advanced smartphone in the world. It's just cool. It goes black and white. And yeah. you're like, oh, that's fun. That, no, that, 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 is, that is pretty cool. Uh, one thing that I want to kind of uh, mention as well is the, uh, the Geek's Phone Black Phone, which um, is a, a security-minded phone. The idea is that it kind of makes you anonymous. It comes with subscriptions to uh, uh, different networks that give you anonymous calls and protect your data. You've got anonymous cloud storage and that kind of thing. And so it's you have designed to keep paying to... for it. You have to pay a subscription. Well, you, you get two years for free when you buy the phone. It costs six hundred twenty-nine dollars wherever you are in the world, and okay. uh, you, you get to. to work. I mean, I, the thing is, we don't know how secure it actually is. Can well, it live up to its promises? Well, it's up to those networks, presumably. You have to trust exactly. them. That exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so, but the thing I think is interesting about it is that even though uh, it, we don't really know if it works, I'm not saying you should buy it, but I'm saying it's quite an interesting sort of conversation piece because this is almost like the 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 kind of the the epitome of capitalism right here. It's all about making new things that you don't really need and making people buy them. And uh, people talk about you know companies here talk about game changing when they think of a new way to sell you something. And this is like this is actually you know kind of. Uh, looking at the sort of underpinnings of what technology actually means to our lives, yeah. right? you know, in terms of culture and society and stuff, which well, I think I mean, is really interesting. The, the, the other way of looking at it is that I think people are, are so worried about security and privacy mm. that we can sell them a phone based on that. Well, there but, is you know, that like, as well, kind of, yeah. The, yeah. the fact that this phone even exists and the fact that it's been such a popular talking piece, mm. I think, shows how worried people are generally about, yeah. you know, government spying and there's, a, there's totally a conversation to be had. Okay, well, we need to wrap it up fairly quickly. So, uh, last thing to mention, I guess, is uh, this year has been a year of underdog phone manufacturers. Yes, yes. for example. Yes, yes, yes. Y-E-Z-Z. -Z. Not Yaz. Not Yaz. The yes. only way is up. Yeah. The only way is up. The only, the phone, phonely way is up. You're on fire. On fire, <laughs> on fire. Um, Someone should record this. Yeah. Uh, yes is a good one. Uh, Kazam also. UK, Kazam. Kazam, UK-based uh, phone maker. They Former sell, HTC. Yeah, they, yeah before it, uh, from a HTC executive. Yeah. They, um, they sell phones mostly in, in Europe, but you know they're pretty cool. They're all working to make sort of cheap cheap Android phones yeah. widely available. And of course Firefox as well. Oh, Firefox. I should mention as well, Tizen is on the old uh, the Gear Fit. What does it look oh, like? Easy. What do you think of Tizen? Uh, so Tizen, uh, the Gear Fit, it looks basically the same um, as it, it did on the original Galaxy Gear. Um, but it's, you know, it's fine, and I had took a look at it on the on a Samsung reference phone, um, but they've skinned it very heavily to make it look a lot like um, to make it look like their Android interface. Right, sure. But, so it's very um, familiar then. Yeah, so I had a chat with Tizen, and their focus over this last year has changed from going into all the phones to going into loads of connected devices, going into cars, um, cameras, Intel, all sorts of things. Into yeah. cameras, going yeah. into fridges and and thermostats, like all this different stuff. So it's not just about oh, it's a new phone interface. Now it's going to be like they want it to power loads of things. So it's, this is it, yeah, exactly. It's, it's it's not really just about phones anymore. Mobile doesn't mean phones. Mobiles means means kind means of everything. Uh, means everything. The world so, is mobile. The whole world, the Internet of Things. So really quickly, let's see what uh, have we had any feedback from the uh, the fans, the viewers, the yes. listeners, the readers. Yes, we Bear have. Bear in mind, uh, like I say, you can see all these videos on CNET.com. Videos, photo slideshows, hands-on first takes. Speaking of videos, yeah. I saw a pretty good video on CNET.com, and um, there was a really it was a, it was a guy presenting it at was it. It was you! You were presenting it, it, Luke. Was it? Was this it guy right show? here. Oh my goodness. Why don't you tell us about your show? That's Adventures right. in Tech. The newest episode of Adventures in Tech takes a look at how Samsung forged its galactic gadget empire. So it starts with the S5, we talk a bit about the S5, and then we take you through how Samsung became a superpower, and it's not just about the flagships. They had a, a cunning strategy at work. Also, there's an animation in there built by our producer, Mark, who you will never see. Never. Uh, who was actually in the video. So you will um, see. <laughs> who you will see. <laughs> and um, it, has, it has over 120 uh, Samsung Galaxy devices in it to scale and yeah. making them just made Mark lose his mind, yeah. which was great fun. Yeah. So <laughs> do check it out. Um, search Adventures in Tech Galaxy S5. Great, cool. Very quick okay. feedback. Oh yeah, Chris Roebuck says, Samsung, why? What an opportunity missed with the S5. A new phone body, an overhaul of software, and I'd be ordering a new one. It's pretty much the same as the S3. Where's my Metal S5? They have gone for the Apple boring approach. And they're going to make a load of money doing it. But there what you go. I reckon Samsung might do is it, it launch, because Samsung does typically wait for its own events to do a big, big launch. Right, yeah. And HTC has done that. HTC's next flag flagship is going to be coming out in week after next. We're, yeah. we're going to a launch event. So Samsung could well be holding off this new souped up slim metal 4K display sure. phone that we have seen heavily rumoured and we're expecting to see. So do you think the S5 won't even be the, the, the big Samsung well, announcement? It could, it could well be that Samsung is just holding Whoa. off, wait to see what HTC is doing. For the S5 doing, and Plus, we'll, and then we'll do, S5S. It could be. I, <laughs> I, I think that would make, actually that would be a really sensible move for Samsung. And, yeah. 
that could well be what will happen. Sounds all about well, sensible You heard it here first. Matthew Dawson Jones says, "We just did a baby. Now all we have to do is somehow keep it alive." What tech have you come across either for babies and toddlers or to help look after babies and toddlers? Well, babies love the Galaxy Gears. Like, <laughs> you know, they're great because they love to be connected all the time. They love yeah. to get their notifications. Babies through. love to track their exercise and fitness, how <laughs> yeah. many calories they're burning, yeah. something like that. Uh, I have seen actually a device called iPacify, which is made by a British company, and it's a Bluetooth dummy. So uh, it's, it's got like a, 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 a temperature sensor in the dummy, so it's like putting a thermometer in the baby's mouth, talks to an app, tracks everything. I mean, everything talks to apps these days, but yeah, yeah. yeah. iPacify is very good. I know you can get like tablets for kids. Is it Leapfrog, I think? Makes yes. Yeah. Kind of like Samsung make one as well. It's like a Galaxy tab that's been heavily skinned for kids. Yeah. And Me? also there are sort of various... PS5 um, has a kids mode. There are various yeah. GPS trackers where you sort of you put a band on your kid yeah. and then you can sort of track it and it yeah. will learn And you don't even have to bother routes. talking to the little... Yeah, so, so you know what they're up to, and if they stray too far outside their normal route, then... It delivers a massive electric shock. Yeah, it basically thinks, OK, well, the tile's gone, shut down, and... Uh, yeah. that's it, no. <laughs> it's gone, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Went out of range. Yeah, <laughs> And but, but one kid. last question. And finally, Mark Bridges says, could we see 4G TVs for better connectivity? That's a very good idea. I hope that's, not. That's not a bad no, idea. That's an awful idea. Why? You're at home, you've got your Wi-Fi. The TV's at home, you're not carrying it with you, you don't need mobile connectivity. I'd say we've been using 4G a fair, lot, a fair amount in uh, Barcelona, and it's been pretty cool, yeah, even yeah, when you're inside. Yeah. Mm. yeah, but you think, about it like this way. think about it like this, if 4 is good enough, you can be on maybe like one contract for your TV and your phone, you don't need to pay uh, you know, separate bills for all your data and for all your broadband. Well, that's true. Well, we should only be paying for one internet. So it, so it would connect through your phone then? Television a is four, a, a 4G no. TV is a ridiculously bad idea, and I hope I never see it because I will be furious and I will never write anything good about it. Unequivocal stuff. There you go. Well, television is uh, it's a different order of magnitude of like, of, uh, of of bandwidth, isn't it? Yeah, because I also don't write good. about TVs, so yeah, well, that's why there I'm there you go. <laughs> so we're generally not impressed. Well, we're in I two like minds about it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, please keep the feedback feedback coming at facebook.com slash UK official. Or tweet us at CNET UK or email us at podcast at cnet.co.uk. Very good. And remember, you can see this video and many more at youtube.com slash CNET and uh, all the reviews and hands on first takes and videos and all the rest of it that we've been yeah. uh, writing this week are on CNET.com. Yeah. Anyway, so that's, uh, that's pretty much it. We're wrapping up here at uh, Mobile World Congress 2014. So that's all the cool phones, tablets, and wearables, and more that, uh, that we've been seeing this week. Uh, check it out. Yeah, keep coming back to CNET. And uh, we will see you next week. Bye. Bye.